Hey everyone, I'm Alan Thrall here at Untamed Strength Gym in Sacramento, California. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about differences in barbells. Which barbells should you be using for which lifts? So you walk into the gym on your first day, you head over to the barbell storage, assuming all barbells are the same, and wham! You suddenly realize you have no idea what you're doing. Long barbells, short barbells, thick barbells, thin barbells, color-coded barbells, Barbells that are smooth in the middle, barbells that have a patch of grip in the middle, and even barbells that have grip all the way through the middle. You don't want to stand in one spot for too long because you're afraid of drawing attention to yourself, so you just grab a bar and proceed to do your squats. When someone approaches you and says, uh, you're squatting with the deadlift bar, loser, and then you leave the gym never to return. I'm here to ensure you never find yourself in that situation. First things first, a lot of you won't have to worry about anything I say in this video because your gym is outfitted with matching barbells. So you have no choice, there's no difference in bars, take what you get, don't throw a fit. But if you go to a smaller, privately owned gym, like a powerlifting gym, you're gonna find different barbells, so I'm here to explain what all of it means. You've got power bars, you've got deadlift bars, you've got squat bars, you've got weightlifting bars, you've got hybrid bars. I would say these five barbells are the most common bars you're gonna run into. Let's talk about each of them. First, let's talk about power bars. The chef's knife of your kitchen cutlery. Power bars are 45 pounds in weight. Typically a 29 millimeter diameter, sometimes half a millimeter more or less. They have a section of knurling in the center of the bar. This is for added grip on your back when you do squats. They are around 86 inches long, about seven feet. They have markings or rings on each side of the barbell equidistant from the center. These are called power rings. They are 32 inches apart, which is like uh, 81 centimeter. They've got average to aggressive knurling. They have pretty high tensile strength, meaning they don't bend much. They're not super whippy. They're made for squats, bench, and deadlift. A power bar is the most common barbell you're gonna find in the gym. When in doubt, just use the power bar. Next up, deadlift bars. Deadlift bars are used for deadlifts. Wow. You can tell it's a deadlift bar because of the way it is. That's pretty neat. Dr. Adam Paul has already been gracious enough to do a full video on the deadlift bar so you can check it out if you have not seen it already. Let's check it out. Deadlift bars are thinner in diameter than most power bars, sometimes up to as much as two millimeters thinner. Deadlift bars do not have center knurling. They are longer than power bars, up to about 92 and a half inches, which is about half a foot longer than a normal power bar. They also have power rings, same distance, 32 inches apart. Deadlift bars usually have very aggressive knurling so that that knurling bites and digs into your hands while you're ripping heavy deadlifts, bro. They have a lower tensile strength than power bars, making them more whippy and bendy. This is by design because a bendy barbell will change the mechanics of the lift to the starting position. When the barbell bends a lot at the start, it creates a higher starting position before the weights even leave the floor, making the range of motion a little bit less. This, coupled with a thinner diameter, allows you to deadlift like 1,000 pounds. <laughs> Squat bars are used for squats. The squat bar is easily identified by this huge patch of center knurling. Some squat bars even have center knurling all the way across. So it's really not center knurling, it's just a fully knurled barbell. They are longer than power bars and some of them are even longer than deadlift bars. Squat bars carry more girth than a power bar or a deadlift bar being as big as 32 millimeters in diameter compared to like a 28 and a half millimeter power bar. They also have very aggressive knurling so that that barbell digs into your back while you manhandle 225 pounds. Or woman handle, or they handle. They have powerlifting rings as well, same as a deadlift bar and a power bar 32 inches apart. Squat bars are among the strongest and stiffest barbells, able to handle up to 1,000 pounds without bending or having any sort of whip as the lifter squats the bar or walks the bar out. In fact, old school power lifters will say things like, yeah, you know, back in the day, he squatted a thousand pounds on a normal barbell, pointing to the fact that walking out and squatting 1,000 pounds on a normal barbell or just a really heavy squat on a normal barbell was much more challenging because of the whip in the bar than nowadays when guys are squatting on 25 kilo reinforced, thicker, stronger barbells. They even have 30 kilo barbells. Which brings me to the next characteristic, squat bars are 55 pounds. There have been a lot of members at Untamed Strength who were pleasantly surprised to learn that their squat PR 
was actually 10 pounds heavier than they thought because they were using a squat bar, not realizing that it's 55 pounds, not 45 pounds. Weightlifting bars are used for Olympic weightlifting, snatch and clean and jerk, typically 28 millimeter diameter. Most weightlifting bars do not have center knurling, although some do. Aleco, which makes the best weightlifting bars in the world, does feature a center knurl patch. However, that center knurling is fine enough that it's not making a cheese grater out of your neck when you rack the barbell to do a clean. Overall, the knurling is less aggressive than a Texas deadlift bar. However, it's not less effective. I think the tooths, the teeths, tooths, the teeth just aren't as tall and deep, but it's still a good grippy, sticky barbell. The main thing to pay attention to if you are using a weightlifting bar, the rings. These are not normal power rings. These are Olympic weightlifting rings. They are further apart than normal power rings. These are 36 inches apart compared to power rings, which are only 32 inches apart. This is important to know if you are going to bench press and you happen to grab a weightlifting bar or just an old barbell with weightlifting marks and you normally place your hands on a certain landmark in the bar, let's say pinkies on the ring, you're going to feel like the bench press is wider when you're using a weightlifting bar because it is, the rings are further apart. Listen up, very expensive weightlifting bars or just a gym's competition weightlifting bar set should not be put in a rack for squats and they should not be put in a bench. They shouldn't be racked. This is up to the owner. I would ask first, if you find yourself running into an expensive weightlifting bar, can I do this movement with this bar if it's not clean and jerk and snatch? This is an attempt to preserve the barbell because they're so damn expensive, but it's also an attempt to preserve the knurling on the outside where people like to grab for the snatch. I don't want this area smooth because it's been racked so many times for squats or for bench press. And hybrid bars. Hybrid bars are used for anything really. Squats, deadlifts, overhead press, snatch, clean and jerk, power cleans, barbell rows, barbell curls. They are marked with two rings, a weightlifting ring and a power ring. Power ring is 32 inches apart and the weightlifting ring is 36 inches apart. It does not have center knurling, and the knurling is a medium intensity. We'll give it like an RPE 7. There are other barbells in the gym to look out for. For example, a women's weightlifting bar, but I'm not gonna cover all that. If you're unsure of what this barbell does, what that barbell do, just ask the gym owner or ask an employee. I wanna explain something here to clarify a bit. Squat bars are for squats. Deadlift bars are for deadlifts. That does not mean that if you want to do squats, you have to use a squat bar. If you want to do deadlifts, you have to use a deadlift bar. Unless gym rules at your home gym are different, if you come into the gym and want to do squats, you can use a power bar. You don't have to use a squat bar. If you want to come do deadlifts, you can use a power bar. You don't have to use a deadlift bar. Like I said in the beginning of this video, when in doubt, just use a power bar. If you're a total beginner and you're not lifting that much weight and you're not competing in a powerlifting federation, there's probably no reason for you to use a deadlift bar or a squat bar unless you just really like using those barbells. I say this because it's been unclear before in the gym, all the squat bars are being used by usually power lifters. And someone comes up to me and says, hey, what do I use if all the squat bars are being taken? I said, well, what are you doing? I'm doing squats. You can just use a normal power bar. Oh, gotcha. I thought squat bars were for squats only and, and, and so on. I hope that makes sense, clear as mud. Your home gym might have a color-coded system to identify the barbells. If not, I would just use the characteristics that I, the visual characteristics that I mentioned in this video to identify the different bars. You could also look at the end caps of most barbells and it'll say deadlift bar, squat bar, and the weight of the bar also. And before you leave, if there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's this. Don't do rack pulls with good barbells. If you want to do rack pulls, use an old junk barbell that maybe the gym has set aside. Here at Untamed Strength, I have a handful of barbells marked with red tape. They're old, junk, beat up, damaged barbells that have either been used for rack pulls and they weren't supposed to, and they're now permanently bent. Or they were uh, thrown off someone's back at the top of the squat, dropped onto safeties that are far too low, and the barbell bent. So we have junk barbells. If you want to do rack pulls, use the junk bars. Rack pulls damage good barbells. Don't do rack pulls with good barbells, please. That's it, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and always remember, Trend on time!